We've all heard that an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but if you don't know which type of apple to eat, our next guest is here to help. <laughs> Joining us with more on his new book, Apples of Uncommon Character, is the James Beard award-winning author, Rowan Jacobson. Welcome hello, to the show. Hello. Hey, how's it going? I'm great. great. Now. Well, you look healthy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, apple a day, sometimes two a day. Wow, all right. <laughs> <laughs> that works for me. There you go. <laughs> now, you've written several books in the past, and you've also contributed for the New York Times, the uh, Boston Globes, and Harper's. But why a book about apples? Uh, I became fascinated with apples because there are thousands of varieties of apples out there. And if you go into a supermarket, how many do you usually see? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, where are the other 7,000? Yeah. Mm. So that, I wanted to focus on some of the cooler apples out there that you don't hear about. So what are some of these more obscure apples that don't get the attention that they deserve? Well, I noticed you guys have a particularly good one right here. Oh. See this little guy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ashmead's kernel, an apple that was uh, born in the 1700s in England. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it looks, it doesn't even look like an apple, right? No. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best flavored apples you'll ever find. Really? And what is it called? Ashmead's kernel. There was some, some guy kernel. named Ashmead. Ashmead's kernel. Yeah. Okay. So is one apple healthier than the other? Um, yeah, that's a good question. And probably the more acid the apple, the more vitamin C is going to be in there. Mm. Okay, it's good to know. <laughs> so you got to balance, you know, whether you're willing to go there. Or not. Exactly. Oh, really? Okay. What has the what apple has the most acidity? Uh, this 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 little this dude is going to be pretty high up there. But Honeycrisp is pretty high in acid mm. too. Mm. I love Honeycrisp. Yeah, really? th this is kind of the 800-pound gorilla in the apple room because. <laughs> it's, Why do you it, say that? It changed everything. When people eat a Honeycrisp, mm -hmm. they don't go back to other apples. And they'll go and pay more money for a Honeycrisp. First apple that's ever been true for. Hmm. Well, I love a green apple. Tell me more about the green apples. Like a Granny I have, Smith? Uh, yes, mm. I love a good Granny Smith. And I have about one a day. Am I on the right track? Definitely. And that's a, that's a tart apple, too. It's so. very tart, but I like it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I feel like it's hard to find a good tart apple mm -hmm. a lot of the time. But now, uh, Honeycrisp, some of the new varieties, they're bringing some of that tartness back. So we're going to start seeing better apples. So are you the guy at the party who has like an apple fact, like an apple martini and an apple fact to go along with it? I'm the guy who puts you in the corner and says, and I got another thing to tell you about apples. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> really? So what kind of stuff are you telling people about in this book? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, one of the big things is the varieties. Mm -hmm. 7,000 varieties that all were born in the United States. 7,000? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Now, how do you go about researching a book about apples, and how do you keep it entertaining for both the reader and yourself? Yeah, exactly. Because um, mm -hmm. it was a couple years that I was really working on this. Right. So I would visit a lot of orchards. There's these these kind of weird guys out there who collect all kinds of old apples. Mm -hmm. And so you can go visit them. They'll have 400 or 500. The USDA has an orchard in Geneva, New mm -hmm. York, with 2,000 varieties of apples. Really? And when so you, you say they collect research. them, what do they do with them? They just... They just, they want to have the biggest collection possible. And then for growers who want one of these old ones, they'll send them a cutting so they can grow their own. Hmm. So what is the most intriguing thing you learned about apples while traveling all over the country? Hmm. The, the, the big fact about apples that people don't realize, and every time you tell them, they go, really? If you take a seed out of an apple, mm -hmm. like say you take this Honeycrisp, take a seed of the Honeycrisp, plant that seed, the tree that grows up will not have Honeycrisp apples. What? Huh? It'll have <laughs> a variety of apple that has never existed before because every seed is a unique individual like we are. Are you wow. serious? Yeah. So it's like a fingerprint? Exactly. Huh. That is very interesting. <laughs> yeah, isn't that, isn't that weird? <laughs> you know, apples seem to be experiencing a renaissance. Mm. Why is that? I mean, you know, kale was popular, broccoli had a moment. Now it seems like apples are back and hot. Yeah, I agree. They're, they're having their moment. They're yeah, hot. It's actually why? Cider Week in, in New York this week. It's Cider, cider week? week? Yeah. Who we knew? need some cider. <laughs> <laughs> I should have brought some cider. Yeah, that's okay. Next time. I'll, I'll have yeah. it next time. Well, speaking of cider, you have like 20 different recipes in this book. Do you have any favorites? Yeah, you know, um, there's so many good sweet apple recipes out there, so I tried to focus on some of the savory stuff. Mm. So I've got like a duck breast risotto with apples in it. That sounds and, divine. And a Brussels sprout and apple stir fry. Mm, not that as divine. Circle yeah. back to the duck breast. <laughs> <laughs> what about a good old standard apple pie recipe? I actually have the perfect apple pie recipe in the book. And I can say that because I didn't create that particular recipe. Okay. A friend of mine named Kate McDermott out in Seattle who has uh, something called Art of the Pie. Kate travels all around the country teaching pie camp. Mm -hmm. So you go to pie camp with Kate 
You come out three days later and you make the perfect apple pie. Pie camp? Pie camp. Okay. I am ready. Sign we me get, up. We've got to get Kate's number. <laughs> yes, I'll sign me up. So why don't you and Kate come back, bring some apples, we'll make the perfect apple pie. With apple cider. No, we'll watch you make we'll it. Cider. We'll eat it. We'll taste it. Yes. All right. Is that a deal? I think we can work that out. All right. <laughs> All right. And well, this and book's available anywhere books are sold right now, right? Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for bringing your apples to us here, keeping Thanks, us healthy. Yeah. Good to be here. You get, right. a, you get an A for apples. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> she had yeah, to do I it. Said she it. had to do I it. I said oh, it. Gosh. Yes, All right. I did. Let's go to commercial before we can, so we can save you. We'll be right back with more Rise Entertainment 360. <laughs>